again, geometry people, Mrs. Saunders here. We're working through our chapter on ratios, proportions, and similarities. Today we're talking about similar polygons. And again, pause the video if you need to, or rewind it if you need to. Just make sure you understand the information as we go. So similar polygons. Similar polygons have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. So think about being able to zoom in and out of a picture. The shape stays the same, it's only the size that changes. Similar polygons have congruent angles, and the corresponding side lengths are proportional. So the angles are congruent, the side lengths are proportional. A little bit different there. So here we have two polygons. We've got A, B, C, D on the left, and E, F, G, H on the right. Now, which corresponding angles are congruent? Well, first of all, the order of the letters in the names of the polygons helps us unlock the corresponding angles and sides. So A corresponds to E. And if you look at the figures, A and E both have one arc. So those are congruent, as are B and F, C and G, and D and H. Okay, now let's talk about the corresponding sides. They are proportional, but we really have to figure out which sides match with the other sides. So again, the order of the letters unlocks the corresponding angles and sides. So A, B are the first two letters. That matches with E, F, the first two letters in the second polygon. And then, whoops, A, B corresponds to E, F. B, C corresponds to F, G. C, D corresponds to G, H and DA corresponds to HE, and all of those are proportional. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's dive into an example and we'll see. Okay, this says, determine whether the pair of figures is similar, and if so, write the similarity statement and scale factor. Okay, there's a lot going on there. First, we're gonna compare the corresponding angles. Now, if these figures are similar, we need corresponding angles to all be congruent. So if you look at this first one, W has one arc. Well, in the next one, P also has one mark. Those are corresponding angles and they're congruent. If we go around, X has four X, sorry, X has four arcs. Q has four arcs. Those are corresponding angles that are congruent. So we can write these out. W is congruent to P, X is congruent to Q, we keep going around, Y is congruent to R, and Z is congruent to S. So we have those. Now we need to compare corresponding sides. So let's figure out which sides partner together. So WX, that partners with PQ. XY partners with QR. YZ partners with RS. And ZW partners with SP. So now what I'm gonna do is instead of writing the names of each of those sides, I'm gonna write their measures instead. So WX has a measure of 12. PQ has a measure of eight. So I'm gonna write 12 over eight for that one and so on for the rest of them. Now the question really becomes, do all the ratios reduce to the same fraction? So we have to look at each of those fractions and reduce them. And actually they do. Each of those fractions reduces to three over two. And that fraction that they all reduce to, that's called the scale factor. So first, we need to write a similarity statement. So we can say WXYZ is similar to PQRS and its scale factor is 3.2. Now, everything I've done here had the left, the bigger one on top, and the smaller one on the right on the bottom. Everything actually could be turned upside down. And we could then also say that PQRS is similar to WXYZ. If we do that, we just have to also flip the scale factor to two over three. Here's another one. Determine whether the pair of figures is similar. If so, again, we're gonna write a similarity statement and scale factor. So the two figures on the left, do all of their corresponding angles equal? Well, no. 
Angle L there is the only right angle hanging out there. It corresponds with E, they're not congruent. So we just move on to the next problem. Okay, the next guy. Well, there's a lot going on in this one. First of all, what figures or what shapes are we even looking at? There's actually two triangles here. There's the little guy on top, and then there's the whole triangle. So those are the two we're comparing. Now, are they similar? Well, we do have corresponding angles that are congruent, see those? And this guy, he's kind of up here by itself, but uh, angle P, but angle P is part of both triangles. They share him. Now, what about corresponding sides? Okay, so the little guy, PQ, that matches with PS. And PQ is half of QS because those are congruent parts. Same thing with this long side here. PR is half of RT. And the bottom, you can see, 11 is half of 22. So we can say then that triangle PQR is similar to triangle PST. And the scale factor is 1 over 2. We could also flip that, right? If we want to have the bigger one first, we could have uh, triangle PST is similar to triangle PQR, in which case, since we're talking about the big one first, the scale factor would be 2 over 1. So we can use scale factors and proportions to find missing side lengths in similar polygons. So we've got two triangles here. Uh, we're gonna I'm going to tell you that they're similar, and we're going to write a similarity statement. So the similarity statement would be triangle RST is similar to triangle MNP. Okay, so we've got the big one on the left, small one on the right. We need to write proportions to find X and Y. Well, first we've got to start with numbers we know. So 32 corresponds with 16. Okay, got that. And then X, its partner is 13. Those partners are what we use to set up the proportions. 32 over 16 equals X over 13. 32 over 16, big over small, equals x over 13, big over small. And then cross multiply. So 6 times x is 16x, 32 times 13, and then we divide both sides by 16, and you get x equals 26. We still need to find y, and y partners with 38. We can still use 32 and 16 to start with, so we've got 38 over y equals 32 over 16, cross multiply, and you get y equals 19. Let's try another one. Let's try a quadrilateral. Okay, so first, write a similarity statement. So we'll say that A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D is similar to L, M, N, P. And again, remember, the order of those letters really matters. So A, B, those are the letters that come first. That corresponds to LM. Those are the letters that come first in the other one. So 14 partners with X plus 9. And just to double check, those are between the 1 arc and the 2 arcs. See that? 1 arc and 2 arc. Okay. Um, let's see what else can we find. We've got BC. BC, that partners with MN. All right. So now we can use those to set up our proportion. 14 over x plus 9, those are those partners, equals 10 over x plus 6, and cross multiply. Once we cross multiply, we've got to use the distributive property get, to get that 10 to multiply by the x and the 9, the 14 to multiply by the x and the 6. And then we'll get all the x's, let's say, on the right side, all the numbers on the left side. You get 4x equals 6 and x equals 6 over 4, or, because we need to reduce it, 3 over 2. Here's another problem. If A, B, C, D, E, this has five sides, is similar to P, Q, R, S, T, we need to find the scale factor of A, B, C, D, E, that's the left one, to P, Q, R, S, T, that's the one on the right. So they're telling us now they want the scale factor of the one on the left to the one on the right and then the perimeter of each polygon. So first we need to find the scale factor. And in order to do that, we have to find sort of the matching sides, okay? So we're gonna do small over big, or left over right, 
And the two corresponding sides that I can see are 15 and 21 because that's AB, those are the letters that come first, okay? And PQ, those are the letters that come first. So small over big, we've got 15 over 21, which reduces to five over seven. That's our scale factor. Now find the perimeters. Well, that's a little bit tricky because in order to find the perimeters, you need numbers around the entire polygon, but there's not a number here, there's not a number at AE, but what we do have are these congruent markings. So because ED, because ED is 10, we know that AE is 10 and BC is 10. Now we can add all of those numbers together and we get the perimeter of the small polygon is 65. That's the small perimeter. We also need the big perimeter. This is where the proportions come in handy. So we take our scale factor, five over seven, and set up a proportion. Small over big, five over seven equals 65. That's our small perimeter over X. That's the big perimeter we're looking for. Cross multiply. 455 equals 5X. Divide both sides by five, and X equals 91. That's the big perimeter. So we'll end there. Next time we're gonna talk about similar triangles, but in the meantime, hey, thanks for being here.